Eric Church is a game designer and project associate with the Wilson Center Serious Game Initiative. He joins us to discuss the newest release, The Fiscal Ship. Eric, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So give us the overview. What, what is the game and what is it intended to do? The Fiscal Ship is a game about the federal budget. And we have a problem coming, which is that in, in a number of years, because of the aging population, because of the current debt and how we're spending, we're going to have a growing level of debt. We need to solve that. But the game isn't just about solving the debt. It's also about the fact that the government still needs to function. The government still needs to deliver on the goods of the fiscal ship. And so the game tries to teach about that balance as well. So you, it's a nonpartisan approach to presenting this problem so that people can figure out the solution for themselves that, that matches their personal goals. On that nonpartisan approach, how did you decide what to leave in, what to leave out, what proposals or initiatives are open to consideration? We tried to pick a lot of the, the proposals and, and policies that are sort of being debated right now. So we represent some, uh, some of the ideas from some of the political campaigns from the primary. But we also, we tried to identify areas, sort of larger goals for people that they might want to accomplish. So defeating climate change, uh, restricting entitlements, cutting taxes. Any, so that we had a number of different approaches. And the way we decided what to include and what to not include was really sort of based on what we could get as far as numbers from the Congressional Budget Office, because the game is entirely driven by numbers from the Congressional Budget Office, but also how those might fall into some sort of aspirations for what people thought might want for the government. And I, I played the game in preparation for discussing it with you. And it, so it, it reacts to your choices in real time. So if I spend some money, I see the line move up or down. Uh, if I pick uh, uh, policies, initiatives that are contradictory, I get a big X saying you can't do both of these things in, in the same reality. Uh, pretty impressive as far as the complexity that behind the, the graphics. Thanks. It, it, was, it was a lot of work to try and pull together all of those different ideas that we have and try and keeping it, keep it from being something that is advocating one viewpoint or another. We wanted it to be something that would be usable by any voter. Right. Well, yeah, we were, we're talking about the complexity. And actually, a question, a, a question I have on that is, do you see it as, is there a danger that it oversimplifies the process, or does it do the opposite of that? It introduces the complexity that people usually aren't aware of. One of the important lessons we want people to get out of the game is that this is a complex problem, that when Congress is dealing with this, they're, de they're wrestling with some very difficult issues and trying to balance some very difficult choices. But we also wanted people to see that it's a solvable problem. You can go in, it's not you can achieve these goals, and you can do what you want with government and reach good ends. Not mathematically impossible. Politically, it appears even Politically may be difficult. So the whole term serious game, Eric, uh, tell us what serious games are and, and what, are, what are the other games? Are they on serious? You know, make the distinction for us. So serious games are games that try and use a lot of what we learn from building entertainment games, which mm -hmm. is the other area, to try and teach people to try and achieve specific ends other than simply entertaining people. So with a serious game, you can teach people about how complex systems interact, how difficult and broad facts can be sort of wrangled into a more understandable way, but keep it fun. It's something that, it's a way of learning that is actually entertaining. Not so serious that you, you drain all the fun out of the experience. The, so uh, who can benefit from playing this? You, you obviously believe that you can have an actual impact on policymakers, on citizens, uh, on people who take the time to, to try this out. So who are the main targets? Who do you think can benefit the most? We really want to reach interested voters, people who are interested in the budgeting process, interested in the problems facing America, but may not know exactly what all of these things are. They may have heard some sound bites where people propose, say, cutting all foreign aid, and they don't realize how little of an impact that may have on the overall problem. And we're also interested in reaching high school and college students. So we tried to make a game that would work for anybody in those groups. What's the best case scenario as far as impact? What, what are you hoping will happen? We hope that people play the game, that people reach out to Congress with their, what they've come up with on their own, with a better view and a better understanding of what it is that Congress does, so that when they do contact Congress, they're not just making demands, but they're making demands with an understanding of what they may need to balance those with. If we had the, uh, I know you were telling me that there was a scenario where, uh, was it the Wall Street Journal, that someone played the game on behalf of Donald Trump, assume, based on his campaign utterances. Who, yeah. who, who was it that did that? Fortune magazine Fortune tried magazine, playing playing the game as Donald Trump, yeah. and they tried pick they tried to identify we tried to identify 
what policies, what goals he would have, Based and what policy he would pick based on what he said on on the on stump in stump speeches. And what they discovered is that it's not really possible. And in fact, we have a warning in in the game: if you pick specific goals and try and reach those, there are some of them that are just not possible with the policies we have in the game. And so, without drastic policy changes beyond what has been discussed in Congress, it's not possible to achieve some goals. At the risk of sounding uh, cynical, perhaps I think any political campaign, if the game is uh, played based on the utterances on the stump, probably doesn't work out very well. It's possible. We'd love for candidates to actually play that the game. That would be great, wouldn't it? That would be... An... Have you reached out to them? We've reached out to them. We have not gotten any responses. Yeah, maybe in the general election. Right now, they, we... they want to become the nominee first, I guess. So where can people play? You can go to fiscalship.org. It's playable. It's free online and available to anybody who's interested. Well, Greg, uh, continued success with this. It's a, it's a great idea and to make learning fun and to let people find out just how complex and what kind of trade-offs are involved in this kind of undertaking. Congratulations on the launch. Thank you. Thanks for joining us.